I do actually want to take you out to the latest developments here on the Israel-Hamas war at this hour. The Times of Israel reporting a senior Hezbollah commander responsible for dozens of drone attacks on northern Israel in recent months has been killed in an airstrike in southern Lebanon. The paper saying that he was the commander of Hezbollah's aerial forces in southern Lebanon and was responsible for today's strike on the Israel Defense Forces Northern Command Headquarters. I do want to bring in Elon Levy, a spokesperson for the Israeli government, joining us now to discuss the latest developments coming in on the war. Elon, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me on again. Well, first off, I do want to get your thoughts here on the situation that is ongoing over in Lebanon. There have been these airstrikes that have taken place. Hezbollah also attacking Israel as well, especially over the weekend with that large attack. Just break down for me the latest on that overall situation. This is a very dangerous situation. After Hamas declared war on us on October 7th from the Gaza Strip, Hezbollah decided to join that war. And for the last three months, that Iranian-backed terror proxy in Lebanon has been raining hundreds of rockets at northern Israel. Now, that aggression has forced 80,000 Israelis to flee their homes, and they can't go back home because Hezbollah is continuing to shell their homes. And the risk now is of the same thing that Hamas did on October 7th, the brutal massacre it perpetrated around Gaza happening on our Lebanese border. So after three months now of warning Hezbollah to desist, we are being very clear that we stand at a fork in the road. Either Hezbollah backs off or we will push it away. Now, there is still hope for a diplomatic window to get Hezbollah to move away from the Lebanese border. That's what it's supposed to do under the relevant UN Security Council resolution to keep away from the northern border. Now, that has never been enforced. And we're saying there is time now for a diplomatic solution, which we very much prefer to keep Hezbollah away from our border and stop its aggression against our people. But if Hezbollah and its Iranian warlord patrons do not back off, we will have no choice but to push them away so that the people who have become refugees in their own country can return safely to their homes. Elon, I do know that uh, nine IDF soldiers were confirmed dead at least on Monday. What can you tell me about the attacks that, that claim their lives? Yeah, everyone in Israel really feels the pain of these nine families of soldiers who fell like heroes in battle in central Gaza, uh, in battles against Hamas terrorists. We haven't released any more specific information, but it's important to understand what they are doing there. You know, this war could have ended on October 8th if Israel had decided to simply bomb Gaza from the sky without regard for civilian casualties. But we take very seriously our obligations under international law to distinguish between terrorists and between civilians. And that means that our soldiers are there on the ground in very difficult conditions. They are fighting in a unique counter-terror urban battlefield in which Hamas has deliberately embedded itself inside and under civilian areas. They are fighting to thwart the Hamas human shield strategy. Most of the 1,500 terror tunnel shafts we have found in Gaza are inside schools, homes, hospitals, mosques, UN facilities, even under children's beds. That is Hamas's strategy, to hide its military assets under civilian areas. And our soldiers are having to go into these places, urging civilians to evacuate, to try to reach the monsters, who perpetrated the October 7 massacre and who have been promising us more October 7 massacres, as many as it takes, until they destroy our country. So we desperately want our friends, our sons, our brothers to come home. None of us wants them to be stuck in reserve duty, putting their lives in danger. But we know they have a mission. They have a mission to fight to bring back the 136 vulnerable hostages still trapped in the Hamas terror dungeons and to bring to justice the Hamas rapist regime for the crimes it perpetrated on October 7th to make sure it can never do them again as it has been threatening every day since then to do again and again. And a bit earlier on today, a Hamas chief was speaking in Doha and calling on Muslim states to give weapons to Palestinian terrorists, saying, quote, the time has come for Muslim states to support the resistance with weapons. And this is, quote, not the battle of the Palestinian people alone. Is that anything new? Is that surprising? Is it alarming? What 
are the government thoughts on that overall? Hamas is feeling the heat, but this is nothing new. On October 7th, as the massacre was still unfolding, as the death squads were invading Israel, breaching its border, burning families alive, raping little girls, abducting grandmas into Gaza, Hamas was calling on Palestinians in the West Bank to grab guns and knives and join in the violence. It was calling on Hezbollah in Lebanon to target Israel with rocket fire. It's clear that Hamas expected that the brutal atrocities it perpetrated on October 7th were going to be the opening shot of a much broader war. And Hamas is now trying to escalate this war to try to take some of the heat away because it is getting clobbered in Gaza. We have already completely dismantled its military infrastructure in northern Gaza. We've killed 8,000 of its terrorists. We've apprehended around 1,000 other terrorists from Hamas and Islamic Jihad. And it is now trying to escalate this conflict. And we are firm in our resolve that we do not want this conflict to escalate any further. We are focusing on destroying the Hamas rapist regime that is promising more October 7th massacres and stopping other actors from entering this war. And in that context, it's very important that Secretary Blinken is here in the Middle East right now to try to stop this war from escalating because Hezbollah now seems hell-bent on dragging Lebanon into a totally unnecessary war, the war that Hamas started, a war that the people of Lebanon don't need or deserve, and God knows we don't need or deserve. So we hope that we can contain this conflict, finish off the October 7th monsters, and stop this from escalating any further. And I have seen photos on social media posted by you, as well as Tal Heinrich, uh, Avi's out there as well, where you have been going around to the sites that were hit by Hamas on October 7th. Tell me about some of what you've seen. We entered the Hamas terror tunnel this week, a team from the Prime Minister's Office Spokesperson's Department, and you really have to see it with your own eyes. This is a tunnel that ends just a few hundred meters away from the Israeli border. It is the width of a subway train. It extends for four kilometers into the Gaza Strip with ventilation shafts and electricity running all the way through. Four kilometers deep. That is only part of an estimated 500 kilometer terror tunnel network under Gaza. There is a Gaza above ground and there is a Gaza below ground. And Hamas spent 16 years redesigning Gaza's cityscape for the sake of its human shield strategy, deliberately building tunnel shafts and tunnels underground connecting to the homes and the mosques above ground. And it did that to try to protect its military assets by using civilians above ground in a flagrant breach of humanitarian law and, of course, every norm of humanity. And you really scratch your head when you see the enormity of it. And I was talking to journalists there as well. How much concrete Hamas poured into those tunnels, concrete that should have gone into homes above ground, went into the tunnels underground connected to those homes. How much engineering skill and talent got poured into those tunnels? You know, Gaza had resources. Its problem has never been resources. It had concrete, it had money, but Hamas, Gaza had different priorities. Unfortunately, it prioritized the October 7 massacre and poured all the concrete down into the Hamas sewers into those terror tunnels. And we're insisting that the day after Hamas, the day after Israel's total victory, Gaza's priorities have to change and they have to focus on peaceful reconstruction and building permanent homes dedicated to committing in, to living in peace next to Israel instead of building the military infrastructure to try to destroy it because they will not prevail and we will win. My last question for you, Elon. What is one misconception you think people have about the war that is ongoing right now that you want to make sure is cleared up? There are two major misconceptions. The first is that Israel is targeting civilians. We are targeting the Hamas monsters who perpetrated the October 7 massacre and are threatening another one. The reason we are seeing such tragic civilian casualties is that Hamas declared war, is fighting that war from inside civilian areas, hiding behind civilians deliberately. And we're doing everything we can to get civilians out of harm's way, but Hamas wants civilians to be hurt because that generates images that produce sympathy that it hopes will create diplomatic pressure on Israel to abandon the hostages and leave the Hamas rapist regime standing. And the second misconception is somehow this is a war that we want or we are enjoying. 
This isn't a war we wanted, we started, we asked for, or even expected. This is a war that Hamas waged on us, with an invasion and brutal Holocaust-style atrocities on October 7th. There is no one in the world who wants this war to end more than the Israeli people, and parents around the country are not sleeping as their children were ripped away from their ordinary jobs and thrust into tanks to go into Gaza and be everyday heroes. We want this war to end, but we need this war to end with the hostages home and Hamas no longer in power. Because the consequences of leaving the Hamas army of terror in place will be that Hamas will attack our people again exactly as it has been threatening to do over and over again. And after we've suffered the brutal atrocities of October 7th and Hamas abducted 250 people and told us it wants to burn our families and rape our little girls and abduct our grandmas again, we have no intention of abandoning the hostages in Gaza and leaving Hamas in power. We want this war to end but we need it to end in a way that ensures Hamas can never attack us again. And that can only happen with the end of Hamas. All right, Elon Levy, uh, Israeli government spokesperson. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. Anything else you want thank to you. add before Anytime. I let you go? You know, I saw a fascinating poll uh, this week showing that despite all the noise on social media, when sometimes it feels that we're under constant bombardment in public opinion, the large majority of Americans, uh, around 65%, believe that the United States is either giving Israel the right amount of support or should be giving it more support. And we know and we feel that support from the American people. We know that our American allies have our backs and understand that democratic nations have a right to fight back against terrorist monsters who want to perpetrate more atrocities against innocent civilians. We know America wants us to win this war, and that is exactly what we will do. All right, Elon Levy, thank you again for taking the time to join us and help break down the latest information here. We appreciate it. Thank you.